Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the afternoon sessions for the North Central Region uh, Virtual Conference. This video was done in February for the St. Louis chapter, and it will be broken up into three parts. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Michael Bird with Core 10 Architecture and Megan Mitchell with Core 10 Architecture. Thank you, Steve. Um, and thanks everybody for, for tuning in. We had a lot of fun doing this tour. It was kind of the uh, first of its kind tour for the chapter, certainly, and, uh, and for Core 10. Um, we're excited about getting a chance to do something similar when this project is complete. And it's a live construction site, so I was the only one on site with the camera on a gimbal and uh, just trying to make sure I wasn't going to get run over or accidentally destroy anything. So um, don't show my insurance agent. Um, and, and Megan is really the, the brains behind the operation. She and Amanda Norris were um, the team that, uh, that really primarily did the work. Um, for this crowd, I will say that I, I was the primary spec writer. So if you have any fingers to point, then I'm the guy. So George, go ahead and roll it. Well, welcome everyone. I am Missy Morgan and I am the Marketing and Business Development Director at Corten Architecture. Um, we're really happy to have you guys here today. So this is peek behind the construction curtain with the Construction Specifications Institute and Corten Architecture. Now, I also wanna introduce the team that is with me. I've got Megan Mitchell, Amanda Partika Norris, and Michael Bird is the one that's holding the camera and he's going to be doing the tour. So they're going to pipe in here in just a few minutes. Before I turn it over to that team, what I wanted to do is just give you a little bit of history about the Muni. Um, I think that's going to give us all some context so we understand exactly what we're talking about regarding the renovations we're going through today. So um, the Muni is a Broadway style outdoor musical theater and it seats 11,000 guests. A uh, lot of people. Um, this local opera has been producing shows in-house ever since they opened in 1919, so more than 100 years ago. It's pretty impressive. Uh, their mission is that they want to enrich lives by producing exceptional music theater, and they want to make that musical theater accessible to all. Um, they're also continuing this tradition right there in Forest Park. This photo is from 1920, so just one year after the Muni officially opened. This is a, a picture of the stage um, more than 100 years ago. And I wanted to give you some photos so you can kind of see, okay, this is what it looked like before. This is what it's looking like today. Here's another photo, by the way, compliments of the Muni. This is a really great close-up of stage left um, from 1935, okay? So keep that in your mind. And let's fast forward to what we have here in 2017. This is a photo taken from the show, A Chorus Line. Just one year after this season in 2018, the Muni announced a, a, its second century capital campaign. And the entire focus and purpose of this campaign is to update the century old facility because they wanted to continue to bring that first class musical theater to St. Louisans and beyond. Um, and the building was in sore need of some changes. So this campaign has two phases. Okay, the first phase, um, Corten was not a part of the first phase, but we really wanted to give great kudos to the Muni and the team that did handle the first phase. It was the stage and it included the seats. We think it looks phenomenal. Um, we were out there just a few weeks ago and got some drone footage and that's how we got this photo. So wanted to let you guys know that phase one is complete. It looks really awesome. And we are so proud to be a part of phase two, which is the backstage. So if you look through that stage and into the back, those are the buildings that we're gonna be talking about today. And before I turn it over again, I wanna help everybody understand and get a little bit of respect for the people who make things happen backstage. So knowing that the Muni produces all of their shows in house, um, which ends up being about seven a season and the season typically happens in the summer. A lot of people might wonder, well, what's happening, right? Today it's February, it's really cold. This is an outdoor theater. Um, what are people doing at the Muni? Is anybody working there right now? And the answer is yes. They have about 40 plus people who work um, full-time all throughout the year, including the winter. And they're just getting the Muni ready to rumble when spring picks up and that summer season starts. Once spring opens and, and the season starts to really begin, it opens up to about 600 plus people who are working at the Muni, which is really incredible. 
So who are these people? What do they do? Well, it ranges from actors um, that come in from all over, costume designers, stage managers. They have an audio visual team, of course. Um, and because they're making their own shows, they also have painters, builders. Um, we have ushers for the shows, an administration team, which, you know, that's what keeps this whole thing looking like a well-oiled machine. They have marketing and they also have a nurse on staff. And when you think about all these roles, this is a complex set of workers um, and they've really made do um, for short term renovations and kind of stitching things together over the last 100 years just to make things work that the best that they could. Um, but alas, the Muni really did require a, an overhaul to the backstage area. And that's what brings us to today. Um, we're going to talk to you about the backstage renovations. I'm going to turn it over to one of my colleagues, Megan Mitchell, who is an architectural designer at Core 10, and she has been a part of this project since the beginning. So I'm going to let you take it from here, Megan. Thanks, Missy. Um, so from the beginning of this project, we've kept our focus on a design that acknowledges every part of the showmaking process, um, specifically for the Muni, not just any theater company. The qualitative part of our process became tangibly important and we realized quickly that spreadsheets were not going to lead us to the best solutions for this space. So instead, uh, we let the Muni team show us exactly what they needed. We interviewed every facet of the production teams and staff, getting all the details on how each department operates and the needs of each department for their new spaces. Here you can see an image um, inside their costume warehouse, and we are speaking with the wardrobe master and mistress. We attended shows both front of house and back of house. We sat in on meetings and we watched them while they rehearsed, painted, and built sets and designed and stored costumes. We were really excited to learn about how each function currently operates and what they hope to see in future spaces. This image was taken in the dressing rooms where we were talking about the needs of the wig stations and the wig storage. We made sure to look at and consider every nook and cranny of space to see how we could reimagine the existing space for better use. Our observations led us to understand the actual physical space that we had to work with and all of the nuances of how materials and talent flow before, during, and after a show. Here, we are walking through the pops, prop storage. All of the information we gathered enabled us to provide the Muni with solutions that were customized to meet each team's backstage challenges and opportunities. So now I will kick it over to our lead architect on the project, Amanda, who has been in charge of organizing and coordinating all parts of the project, uh, the process of the project. So here's Amanda. Thanks, Megan. So I'm excited to share how our summer immersion into all things Muni was translated into spaces to take them into the second century. Um, so we're gonna start by getting our bearings. So part of our process was understanding what we have to work with, what are the existing buildings? So you see the aerial view here on the screen. Um, so north is down to the bottom of this picture. You see the pergola and the box office, um, which many of you may be familiar with. And then up at the top of the screen to the south, of course, is the stage and the seats. And then on either side, east or west, is the pergola that the public walks down. Michael's standing in one of those. He's standing in the west pergola right now. And then what you see in between all of that is this U shape of buildings and open space. And that really was the, the palette that we had to work with. Um, so to dive into that a little bit more and kind of learn our lingo, because I'll use some of these terms. So just so you know what we're talking about, we have essentially three pieces of building, building one, building two, and building three. So if I focus in on building one, which is the Northern L-shaped building, so we often refer to it as the administrative building because the administrative staff, they're the ones who are here year round in this facility. Um, we'll get into a little bit of what these buildings have become in our new plans. You can kind of see a quick list here that the design office is. This is the one spot where we've got a third floor and it pops up in that middle. So it's the designer's loft. And then the lower levels becoming gathering space, the kitchen and canteen and actor spaces. And then if we shift over to building two, um, it looks 
much smaller than the roof area that you're seeing in this area. And that is because that is mostly just covered roof area. So you can see where the crane is, that is their primary build space. Um, so building two is just a smaller building that sits alongside of that, alongside the West Pergola. The lower level we'll often refer to as the carpenter's building or carpenter break area, which is essentially what it says it is. And then the upper floor we refer to as the patron building, and that has is directly connected to the West Pergola and is more on the public roof. And then the last building that we worked with is building three. And our other lingo for that is the dressing room building. So historically, the upper floor of that is where all the dressing rooms, star dressing rooms, private dressing rooms, company rooms, um, and some other spaces have been located. And then in our uh, new plans, we're locating the costume shop, fitting rooms, wardrobe, and staging to the lower level. So that kind of gives you the lay of the land and our lingo. Um, and as part of our process, one of the places we started was, okay, looking at this as a flat floor plan, uh, two-dimensionally. Um, so apologies, this is flipped from the aerial that you saw. So north is up, the stage would be to the bottom, uh, to the south. Um, so this is what we had to work with, overlaid with some color coding. So just to give you an indication of what you're looking at there, the blues are typically our dressing room or costume related spaces. Orange is administrative. Yellow is actor spaces, green are technical or production spaces, and gray are patron spaces. So something that I think you might see and that we noticed is certainly there's sort of disconnect between blue spaces or, and gray spaces are sprinkled into the backstage, which was problematic because those are public access spaces. So being backstage that needs to stay secure, um, that was a problem. So. That was sort of our groundwork. And I'd say that there was an assumption at the onset that, that we would need more space. But our process really yielded four guiding principles that led us to be able to work with a lot of what we already have. Um, so you see a few photos here. Um, so the mechanical service was entirely updated. We were putting in new RTUs, uh, VAVs to the greatest extent that we could for control and then an overall building control system throughout these buildings. Uh, the electrical system, likewise, I needed an overhaul. You're seeing a photo here of the former equipment, which was interior space. So we're moving that system outside, um, gaining space in that process, and uh, also employing inverters for backup. And then likewise, the plumbing system. So you see, um, aging fixtures, aging pipes. And uh, this is one of our cases in St. Louis where the sanitary and the storm sewer had been combined historically. So we are um, replacing all that underfloor piping and getting the sanitary and storm separated. So the second guiding principle um, has to do with improving adjacencies. Um, so from that first diagram and noticing that obviously there's a disconnect for um, like-minded spaces just trying to promote efficiency where we could um, with bringing programs that really needed to be in, in contact with each other in contact. Uh, so this is a, an early diagram that we looked at um, and there was really one big move. We made a lot of subtle moves to kind of shift things around, um, but the costume shop, we are picking up and relocating it into the lower level of building three and thereby swapping over the kitchen spaces into building one. Um, so we're creating the dressing room to have all things related to dressing, wardrobe, costume, all in the same building to hopefully really bring those in connection and, and make them function more efficiently. So then this is what that color diagram looks like now. Um, we hope it indicates kind of those colors coming into contact with each other. Uh, the blues are essentially all in the same building. Um, yellow spaces are all on the lower level, the kitchen red all on the lower level, and then the orange, the administrative uh, um, functions, able to spread out and be all on the same floor on the second floor. And then those patron spaces in gray, you notice they're not backstage anymore. They're pulled off to uh, the patron building or building two that's along the public way. 
So then our third guiding principle had to do with um, increasing community and connectivity. As Missy mentioned, there's a lot of people, they're here for a short amount of time and they're doing really incredible work. Um, they cross paths a lot, but where we could provide that interaction in a new or different way, we look for those opportunities. One of this, those places that Megan and I, I think are really excited about, I, hopefully the Muni too, I think so, um, is in the lower level of building one. Um, so building one was really interesting because there was really no clear way to get from the north to the south. Um, you, you definitely had to know where you were going to get from one door to another. There's a lot of doors in general and there was no internal circulation to get from the east to the west. So that is what we were doing as part of this project. You see that highlighted in red here. We're opening, opening up a connection interior to the building, which will also improve accessibility and connecting some major nodes of um, community space with the gathering kitchen area on the east and this lounge break on the west. And then our last major point um, that we worked within was improving accessibility and wayfinding. So, you know, old buildings, steps where you don't want them, small and accessible spaces and accessible bathrooms, et cetera. Uh, so just across the board, um, wherever we could improve that, we did. And in part of replacing all the plumbing systems, any new restroom, we're making sure that they're accessible, um, adding ramps where we could, finding those paths within the, the spaces to keep an accessible route. Uh, and then just trying to clarify circulation in general, um, you know, reducing doors where we could, um, making it clear like with that internal circulation, what the route and the path would be. And then one really focused spot that we worked on both the accessibility and wayfinding is here at the main entry to building one. Um, so you see this photo from what was existing. And if anyone has been to the Muni and needed to uh, go to the administrative offices or anywhere in general, you may have entered here. Um, you come off the pergola, you had to go down a few stairs, you get to this little area, you rang the doorbell, and then you waited for this tiny green light, which the air is pointing at, to turn on. And that let you know that you were buzzed in. And then you'd go in the vestibule and you'd see about four doors and a stair. And it was hard to know, where do I go from here? And it definitely wasn't an accessible route. So as part of our project, we are adding a small addition to uh, building one. I see their rendering here. We're excited about this piece. It's a small little piece of program, but it's, it's got a lot of power packed into it. So we're creating an entrance that is on grade, brings you right off the pergola into this main entry. Um, there's a, gonna be a visual connection up this monumental stair to the receptionist. So you'll have a clear understanding. There's a person, there's some contact of, of where you need to go. And then there's an elevator. Um, so there was a lift previously kind of tucked away in a not super convenient spot previously. So bringing this front and center and really allowing for a connection for all levels of this building, I'm really excited about. So I think we've hit our first break here. So, uh, Michael, I'm going to turn it over to you and to Megan. Um, we have no questions at this point. Or is there anything uh, that was in the video that you'd like to uh, enlighten everyone on? I'll go first, and Megan will think about what uh, her favorite bit of that was. But um, from my perspective, I mean, this, this project was, was something I've been aiming at for a long time in my career. Um, I've got kind of a theater fetish, and I've kind of played around backstage and in different things. and and that was my connection to the project. And uh, it wasn't the reason that we got uh, asked to submit, but it definitely helped because I ended up in the room with someone that I had known from a previous theater life. And, uh, and we were able to, to kind of talk shop uh, during the interview process. And then I was able to hand it over to people like Megan who were actually able to execute it while I got to play around backstage and watch it all happen. Um, yeah, working on this project was really, interesting because of all of the many different program pieces that we had to fit in to the existing footprint. And it was really a fun puzzle to solve um, for the Muni. And um, there was a lot of push and pull and give and take and many, many iterations. And it was fun to see how many times we could go back and say, okay, how can we squeeze a little more space in this room 
and take a little more out of this room and get to the exact right solution. And uh, it was really satisfying to get that floor plan um, to exactly where it needed to be for what the Muni was looking for. Okay, That's great. Thanks, uh, thanks for that little insight in the beginning of the program and how that all is going to work together. Can't wait to see how the rest of it works out. So now we're going to kick over to the most fun part. So we've got Michael out in the field. Um, so Michael is uh, one of our principals at Core 10. He's been uh, involved with our project uh, along the way, helping guide us, um, keep us moving in the right direction, making good decisions. I'll give the running narration. So Michael is starting our walk here on the West Pergola, so the west side of the campus. And you're seeing building two, so what we call the patron building. And so this has always had some restrooms. Um, you can see um, there is now a ramp that was just put in. So this is one of the spots where there was always you know, a four inch or so step to get into those restrooms. Um, so just adding a simple ramp in front of that to give an accessible route. And then otherwise we're overhauling those restrooms, um, giving them a nice fresh update. And then the pieces of program that we moved from backstage over to this area are a first aid room. So if someone has a medical emergency during a show, um, previously they had to go backstage. So it was just a longer route, a little harder once um, the, the fire department came to get them into an ambulance quickly. So bringing that right out to, closer to the public, um, that's the doorway there that Michael's looking at, and it has a little restroom in it. And then the other piece is a, a nursing uh, family room. So a nursing mom can get away, um, cut away from the show. There will be a feed to that little room so they can stay more connected. Again, that was previously backstage. So it'll be a lot of quicker for someone to step away and then get back to a show. So Michael's kind of walking along this new ramp, this platform, um, the restrooms. I think you might peek in here. Yes, so you can see we're, we're getting far along. We've got some plumbing rough in, furring some of the walls, uh, getting ready for some, some new fixtures. So this restroom, it's, it's a public restroom, so it's used during the shows, but it also is the closest restroom to what is called the West Platform, which um, during the day is being used for a lot of rehearsal. Um, so having a spot also very close and accessible to that platform will be definitely beneficial. You're seeing, you'll see this lovely yellow glazed tile. Um, most of the Muni uh, consisted of that. Um, yeah, a lot of it is disappearing um, it, it, or being covered over. Um, so it's either been demoed or covered over. So now Michael is going to walk uh, down the west side. This is the ramp that will lead us backstage. This is a little space um, where they store the programs. So our usher space was another spot that was previously backstage and they'd kind of have a long route to run. Um, so we're creating a little spot in that programs room, a little counter that they can kind of come and rest in between helping people out during the show. So we are headed backstage here. There's the new opening that we're putting in um, that leads out of the rehearsal room. Um, so we're walking through this tunnel and this tunnel is kind of between building one to our left and building two to our right. And here we are heading into the open lot. So we're kind of walking into what is that build area. So this gives you a better idea of that covered roof I was talking about. So during the summer, this is activated with our carpenters building the sets for the show. Everything is built here on site and it'll transition from this lower lot up that ramp to the upper lot to be painted. So that steel structure is the old paint frame. It's not used quite as much for active painting anymore. They do more of that on the ground, um, but it is used a lot for tying off the sets in the evening. So those windows, as we're walking towards it, this is um, the, the lower level of building two. Um, materials and such for our current projects. 
Uh, so this is the carpenter break area. Um, so it has lockers. Um, it's always had some restrooms, a little break area, fridge, and it's, it's getting a nice clean update. It's a really low ceiling height, which I think you experience even in uh, this little walkthrough, but we actually lowered the floor a little bit more. We did tear out the whole slab in this, um, in this building and lowered it down a little bit. Um, but this will have uh, individual shower rooms. Um, two of those will be fully accessible. Um, those are kind of lining, you see the, the plumbing reference in the floor Along the, the left wall is where all the lockers, um, the big, they'll be the nice big, I call them fire person style lockers um, all along that hallway. And then Michael's walking towards the south end, which will be where the break area is. So we'll have a nice casework set up, table, um, be able to get in and out of the heat for a little bit. So we're walking back out into the build area. Um, I think Michael's gonna pop into the carpenter's den. Um, Megan and I um, embarrassingly did not know this existed for a long time. It's not really part of our project, except in, in the fact that we had to analyze and look at um, whether we would touch it in any of our other um, renovation projects. We were exploring in addition at one point to building two and it was tricky to figure out how to support um, that building on uh, this elevated platform, elevated stage. And this area happens to sit above the River de Pere. For those of you who are familiar with the River de Pere, it is running under the Muni, under and across the Muni. So it makes foundation work pretty exciting. Uh, so Michael was pointing at the cheese club. So this is another spot. The carpenters will kind of sneak and get away. And I think there was a group of them at some point that would go and eat cheese and crackers. <laughs> so um, you're seeing the remnants of that on the ramp. So this is the, where a lot of the equipment that they're building the shows. Um, table saws, welding uh, equipment. And if we were to go further back, we'd connect over to the underside of the West platform, which is a large prop storage. Megan had one of those photos in her slides. So Michael is gonna walk around. We're gonna go up the ramp that is in front of us. So that's connecting this uh, lower lot up to the upper and where the stage is. Navigating around snow piles. A uh, good view of that roof overhang. Um, trying to get some protection, as you can imagine, um, building sets and trying to put on a show in our lovely St. Louis summers. Those of you who have gone to the Muni in the summer, you know the shows are hot. Now think about building the sets all day long in the heat. So that roof um, is critical. We were hoping that we might be able to build out some more covered areas in this project. Um, unfortunately, won't be able to. So um, hopefully someday in the future, we'll be able to add some for the Muni. All right, so we're walking up here. Um, you see a lovely view out to the audience seating. Um, so very soon, this will start looking more like um, the stage that we see during the summer. Um, so this is the paint area. So a set's built down lower, uh, it's brought up here and gets its beautiful finishing touches. So there again is that structure. Um, it's utilized more for protecting the sets at night. Um, and then now we're viewing more of what Missy talked about with the phase one, the stage project that was wrapped up a year or so ago. So you're seeing the booms that uh, bring the backdrops uh, onto the, um, the stage. Um, this is in its winter condition, obviously snow, but you're seeing uh, different things. The stage will start being put on top of this. Um, and I know that we have Sean and Tracy from the Muni and maybe some others. So I don't know if they wanna speak a little bit, just a couple quick notes about the importance of this stage update and what it means for them. Let me see if you can buzz one of them in. I am having a little trouble getting the attendees okay. into panelists. Well, that's okay. I'll, I'll do my best <laughs> to share a little bit. 
Um, you see the, the light bridge, that was a big part of that project. Um, building in automation pieces, so like there's a trap door that drops down to the orchestra pit below. So the orchestra was relocated over here. That freed up some of the spaces that we were um, for orchestra kind of prep spaces, break rooms. Um, that freed up some of the space that we worked with in this renovation project. Um, yeah, the, the, so there's two towers on either side that are housing a lot of the infrastructure and support spaces that make the shows happen. And then, of course, what most of us see out there, the seats. Michael's probably pretending that he's putting on a show for y'all. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to walk towards, you're seeing kind of off to the left, the um, south side of building three. And so this is our dressing room building. It does have a few other functions. Um, so what we're, the piece of the building that we're seeing in front of us, so this kind of has an L uh, shape to it. Um, Video Village is in the space that's directly in front of us. I think we'll see a little bit more of that as we get into the building. Um, that is supporting stage operations. So they've got a direct spot to get out and handle the automation that's happening during a show. So we just walked into the main dressing room hallway. So that route is the route that the actors are, are running every night, every day to get from the dressing rooms out to the stage. At the very south end though, is where the technical director's office um, is. And that's where, if you remember the picture I had of the big electrical equipment was sitting in that space. So now that's freed up a lot of space there. Um, so Michael is sneaking over to, this is what I would refer to as video village. So um, automation and they're supporting the video uh, screen that was part of the stage renovation. So nice big space in here. They'll have a separate restroom, some storage, lots of storage just around the room in general. And there will also be the green screen. Um, the Muni does certain pieces of their own video production. Um, so having a spot that they can do that with a green screen. And then walking back kind of to the dressing rooms proper, um, there's a laundry space, which is kind of right in front of us. So laundry before was another one of those little costume pieces, but it was sprinkled a little bit of everywhere. There was some machines that were in with the costume shop, but then there were a couple others that were just in the hallway in the lower level here. So they'll have a dedicated space to be able to take the costumes from the night before, launder them, get them ready, and put them back where they need to go without running between a lot of different buildings. Uh, Michael is one in one of our larger company dressing rooms. So you'll see the history here. Um, so I mentioned the glazed block. So Actors, when they were in a show, they'd come and they'd sign their name or draw a little drawing and say which show they were in. Uh, the Muni has cataloged that history. Uh, a lot of it is has been either removed or is getting covered up in this project. Um, but we have two large dressing rooms. And then in, the, in between them, we have a smaller sort of flex dressing room. It'll have garage doors, overhead doors on either side. So depending on the size and types of the companies, this will give the Muni flexibility to kind of change how they arrange those company spaces. And then at either end, there's large restrooms. So if we need to break down by gender, we can. Uh, if there happens to be a large female cast, large male cast, you can just spread out as much as you need. And then on the east side, Michael was just popping in one of our more private dressing rooms. So we have a series that can accommodate two actors. So, you know, there's hierarchy to our casts, um, principal roles, lead roles, um, and kind of the more minor roles where you still need a little bit extra space, maybe have more costume changes, need some uh, more private area, and then our company in a larger room setup. Um, Michael's also honing in uh, a fun thing. We recently learned about this building. So this building, um, we got into needing a lot of concrete restoration work. Fortunately worked through that and finished that up recently and then started discovering there's a lovely tilt to the floor slabs and to the windows. Um, so we had to decide, you know, how do, how do we handle that? Um, 
the building is what it is, so we're working with it. Um, so kind of every door frame has to be set relative to a floor that is sloping uh, about three to four inches from um, kind of halfway through the building to the north. So those uh, individual or dual dressing rooms continue along the left, and then we get to a series of star dressing rooms. Um, again, making a, a few of those fully accessible, which was something we didn't have before. And then Michael is walking into then the technical director's office um, here at the South, which I kind of gave a little uh, info on. Um, so the technical director, if I haven't mentioned it, the Muni team are very hard workers. And the technical director is definitely one of those people. Um, he is here night and day, making sure that the shows are running and the rehearsals are running and then they're happening during the evening. So he's got a great view of the stage, um, direct connection to get that out there as quickly as possible. So we finished part two of the video. Um, no one's really asked any questions yet, but we do have one. Um, and since Thad Goodman was on our last episode, it's kind of appropriate, it's a gypsum board question. Um, Michael or Megan, could you discuss how, how you guys decided on which type of gypsum board products to use, abrasion resistant, abuse, moisture, et cetera? What, uh, how did you decide what went where and how? In, in, in perhaps a typical specifier architect relationship, Megan and Amanda were in the room to, to understand the programmatic needs and they passed that information to me. So I took my cues from, from their needs and uh, Megan knows something about the, the requirements of the spaces. So in areas basically that have a lot of movement going on, like the, um, the dressing room level of uh, building three, uh, during a show, there are people constantly running up and down the halls, in and out of the rooms. Um, and so those hallways um, have special gypsum board or FRP um, on the walls as well to protect them. Um, and in the lower level of the patron building in the carpenter break area, there was consideration um, in that space as well. Basically, especially for the bathrooms in those spaces, they wanted to be able to just hose it down if necessary to clean it. So all the floors in there are concrete. There wasn't a very high level of finish. So just being able to clean it and keep it um, safe from abrasions and such was important in those spaces. But then in the administration building, it's a little bit calmer, uh, not as many people running into things and running in and out of the building. So um, there's a little bit less of that concern. Yeah, and, and from a product standpoint, I mean, I, I, um, I, I did a somewhat uh, close spec. I listed manufacturers that we'd had good experience with, and National was certainly the top of that list. Um, and, um, and it was fun to, to specify those kinds of products on this job because there's so many different conditions that we had to satisfy, you know, on a, on a typical, you know, office warehouse job. You have a very limited number of things to consider, um, but on this space we had everything from you know corporate boardroom to kitchen to you know paint shop, um, you know electrical rooms, places where uh, that we're going to take a ton of abuse from equipment and carts, and places that we're going to take a ton of abuse from you know young volunteers who are running around, and uh, um, and then a highly finished sort of you know entryway. So we got to do a little bit of everything on the product side, and and it was a uh, it was the most fun I've had in a while. Great. Hey, we do have one question, but I what something you said just uh, sparked a, a thought for me, and maybe somebody else too. You mentioned proprietary specs, or you had closed the spec on a few products. Was this a publicly funded project, or was this uh, no. public private? No, this this was you know uh, uh, this is a nonprofit uh, organization. They have they have their own board and they have their own donors and uh, um, you know they've they've been raising money in a capital campaign for for quite a while for these big improvements um, to set them up for the next hundred years as they as they say it. So um, no, we didn't have any any kind of restrictions like that and 
And um, I was given the stage project, which had some limited interior, new interior work done um, by that architect um, around in, in the wings next to the stage, there were some interior spaces. And that was given to me as kind of a template. Um, so it was really the finished, you know, colors and, and products, some of the products, the, the visible pretty ones that were kind of handed to me, but by and large, everything else, uh, the, you know, quite honestly, I will say this because I have you guys here, quite honestly, that spec was not a good spec. And um, my challenge was really to take, take the things out of it that were relevant and uh, craft a, a better, more useful one for our project. Sure, you did a great job. So um, the, the question that came in was, did you try to not have to cover up all the old company wall signatures? Um, so that was a discussion that we had very early on with the Muni, and um, they have documented all of those um, before uh, the demolition process started. They went in and took pictures of all of the signatures and everything. But um, since so many of the walls, the interior walls, were uh, that glazed block, too, and we were getting rid of them, um, we decided that along with the Muni that it was better to just cover everything so that everything would look consistent. And also there's the benefits of adding uh, the insulation where it was needed or covering up block that had been damaged um, and having space to put um, the electrical without having to see the, um, the outlets sticking out of the wall and such. So um, they were not upset about covering them because they were able to document it and they're just excited to have sort of a, a new looking clean slate for the next century. So. And they, they do love their history. I mean, yeah. uh, they're very proud of, of the building and where, where they've come from and where they're going. And that was just one aspect of it. I mean, they have a lot of artifacts that, uh, that, you know, they they showcase, you know, on the, on the walls and in the boardroom and things. And uh, one of the big things was a, um, was a big feature of this backstage that you don't see in many backstages is trees. They had very large, very old walnut trees that were, you know, had to be taken out as part of the stage project, um, which was kind of a necessary evil. And then they, they replaced those trees with new ones uh, as part of that stage renovation in, in large irrigated, um, you know, well-designed tree wells, but um, they had walnut and that walnut they've kept back and they've, uh, there's a local um, furniture company that is uh, actually owned by the, the son of one of our, our members. Um, and they got those walnut trees and were tasked with, uh, with getting the most out of them. And so they've been selling artifacts that they made. They turned some nice, some nice bowls and things out of it for donors. Um, and we were able to access some of that wood for the new boardroom table, which is currently under construction at the shop and it's coming along very nicely. That's great. Great repurposing the old trees. Yeah. I can't imagine in a uh, hundred years when your great, great grandkids are uh, architects and they redesign and rebuild the uh, Muni again, what they're going to run into and find behind those walls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Since uh, the theater is seasonal, are there parts of the project that are not conditioned or only conditioned seasonally? If yes, how did this affect material product selection and or detailing to accommodate seasonal movement? Um, so, Previously, the dressing room building, um, where the dressing rooms were on the second floor, or the first, the second floor, and the kitchen was on the first floor, um, it was not as conditioned as we have it now. I think um, they would have the doors open basically the whole time they were running a show, so um, a lot of people running in and out. Um, so. They did want it to be conditioned in uh, the update, though, because I think having to deal with plumbing, freezing, and things like that was not ideal. But we did have to come up with some solutions for um, doors that would allow for them to have people moving quickly in and out of them, um, but have them closed so that you wouldn't be letting all of the cold air out in the summer. So. Um, we came up with some saloon style doors um, to create vestibules and things like that um, 
to help them with that. But uh, all of the spaces that we've touched are fully conditioned now, especially because they're working outside all the time. Um, they definitely needed spaces to come into that would be cool. <laughs> sense it is get, it does get a little hot and humid around here in the summertime yes <laughs> just a little all right let's see if george is ready george how are we doing i think george has abandoned us all right well since we're at the muni let's do a song and dance <laughs> let's not let's really okay not. <laughs> i was gonna put you guys on the spot for that one well i, I have uh for the the super nerds um I was thinking about this project last night in preparation for this. And, you know, I talked a little bit about the scope of the renovation and, you know, it, we touched, you know, something like 35,000 square feet, I think, um, yeah. on, you know, two or three levels in three different buildings and added a new addition for, uh, you know, an elevator and, and some, some stairs that needed to look, you know, a little nicer than the rest of the joint. Um, so, you know, as I said, we kind of covered the gamut of kinds of products and, and uh, different levels of quality and different levels of performance. Um, one thing that, um, you know, was, was a big driver was uh, the MEP, of course. And this building had original systems, some of which, you know, were as old as, you know, in the 1960s. And, um, and all the service, all the electrical service needed to be replaced. And I, I totaled it up, and, and the new design has uh, 17 total new rooftop package units from between 5 and 16 tons, uh, more than 30 VAV terminals, two little mini split systems for that building, that, that odd little building on the side, um, uh, 11 VRF boxes, an air curtain. Uh, we were dealing with a 4,000 amp service to the facility that we split into. A couple of sub panels for building one, a 2000 amp panel in building one, and an 800 amp panel in building two. Um, a lot of this had to go through existing conduit that was that was underground, but uh, you know, above this creek that uh, that we've been talking about. Um, and so it, it it was it was quite a, a chore for EDM, who is the uh, engineer on the job to coordinate all this, even though it was a gut rehab, it was a very challenging one because you know, as with rehabs like this at this age, you don't have a lot of room. So we had to squeeze a lot of stuff into a very short space. Yeah, looks good so far. How we all right, I got the cue from George. It looks like we're ready to roll again. So uh, okay. let's try it, let's try it. So we are gonna head down to the lower level now. So again, we're walking the path of the actor and we come down the ramps. Um, if we were running to a show, we would probably be running. Um, I think Megan and I really enjoyed seeing the well-oiled machine that is backstage during a show. Um, Tracy, thank you again for keeping us safe. There's sets moving, there's actors running, they're doing quick changes, and Megan and I just tried to stay out of the way. <laughs> um, so we are heading downstairs. So Historically, there was different spaces down here. There again was a large kind of electrical space. Um, and then there was a dressing room down here. So again, talking about where we sort of had a disconnect um, between like programs. So those have all been moved up on the same floor. Um, and then our kitchen spaces were down here. Oh, and this is a fun, there's this little tunnel. Um, it's primarily storage and will be for the future. Um, this is one of our concrete restoration spots. I think you're seeing some of the remains of that. Um, so this is where we made that big move, moving the costume shop over to the lower level here. So this south end uh, will be their break room. It also has a crafts room. So there's an individual who he's making all the small costume elements, hats and shoes and smaller things. Um, they'll have a, a paint booth. Um, a, di a full dye vat. Um, so equipment that was done in a very tight space before, they have some room to breathe and do some things that they weren't necessarily able to do previously. And then we'll have our fitting rooms, which will be off to the left. And then we have some offices on the east side for our, our costume shop manager, um, our wardrobe master and mistress, our costume designers. And then this front part of the building is open costume shop for all of our seamstresses. 
Um, so shows, um, some of the costumes are rented. They'll come in in these large crates called, I think they're called gondolas. Um, so they come in, there's an intake area. We did keep that in building one. It's at the south end. So it's just across the drive. So as things start to be received, they come over here. We have someone who works at intake. Um, we are pushing this building um, footprint out a little bit more than it was before. So adding some space. So those costumes come in, they transfer either into some storage area over here or go directly to seamstresses to work with. So a lot of the times it's the seamstresses are working on a costume that's been rented, but other times it's something that is being made here by the Muni team. Amanda, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. There's a question by George Everding and he was yeah. saying the sloping floor portion, is that sloping floor portion over the river to pair? So it seems that the sloping happens to start kind of where the river de pair does run under that building. Um, so I wouldn't doubt that that has something to do with it. Um, a little story kind of related to that. So Michael is walking down um, between building three and Orthwine Hall. So HOK completed Orthwine Hall a little bit ago, but here at the back, you see that Orthwine Hall doesn't touch the ground back here. So we are in the spot, the River de Pair is running under here. So part of that project, they realized they just, there was nowhere to bring those foundations down. They have really deep piers just in general, but this is the spot, <laughs> the River de Pair is under us right now. And, at, and when we talk about nooks and crannies, uh, the Muni, they are the master of utilizing every available inch. So uh, you see there's items stored here now during the summer, there, that's a spot for bicycles, other things. Um, if there's space, the Muni will use it. And they will use it as efficiently as they can. Um, we are creating a little corridor, uh, external corridor here. Um, Behind us, uh, we've got the staging area for the wardrobe. So if costumes come in where we're headed right now, they can more directly be taken into that staging room. We're adding a door um, to get them there more quickly. Right in front of us, this is a, a piece, well, <laughs> Michael just showed you. Um, that's uh, the paint canopy. So the booms, the backdrops uh, for the sets are painted under that covering. That's not part of our project, but just wanted to point that out. Um, it's closed in here for the winter, giving some semi-enclosed space outside of building one. I can see definitely used for our construction staging. That has a translucent roof, so the painters are able to get as much daylight as they're trying to translate the set designs onto the, those booms and backdrops. So I think Michael's going to head into uh, building one. Um, so this overhead door that we're looking at, this is that one piece of wardrobe that isn't in building three. So it's our wardrobe staging, wardrobe receiving. Um, so they get a lot of shipments. A lot of things are being rented, bought on Amazon to make the different costumes. So they'll be brought in here. Um, you see some of that uh, overhaul that I mentioned. So electrical conduits, the, the plumbing uh, replacement is already complete. Um, so digging up the floor, replacing it. You see it's generally all these buildings are concrete structures. Some were flat slab, others are more of a pan deck like this one. And so since we're, <laughs> Walls are, in, are further along in this building. So Michael will have a little bit more of an interesting route to get in and around uh, building one. He's gonna walk in here, I think to what is, we, we're calling our gathering space. It has a new name. Um, forgive me, Sean, if I get it wrong. I think we did land it on Backstage Deli. Um, so this is where the kitchen moved over. So that used to be in building three and there was sort of an outdoor patio where people would collect, grab a bite to eat. We've moved that over here, um, got given them some more space. So you're, we're walking through the kitchen right now. You see a nice new big hood. Um, worked with a Dennis Glore company on the kitchen uh, design and setup. 
And then they have some other spaces that support the kitchen, of course. So their staff offices are back here. There's a reservations office, which we're peeking in right now. Um, the director of food and beverage, and then their concessions office staff. They're getting um, a separate restroom shower set up. They mentioned this is another team that is here day and night. They are in charge of the concession stand. So they're not just running this kitchen that's utilized um, you know, just for handling um, staff and, and teams throughout the summer. They're also then transitioning into the evening um, and supporting the concession stands. A little janitor space. Um, and then this is their liquor and souvenir store. So again, supporting the concessions. Um, they've got a dedicated space to uh, have those items. Another small restroom just for kitchen staff to be able to uh, take a break real quick. Um, so this has different zones set up in it, uh, different prep areas. Um, Michael's panning around to that spot is where they will have a new walk-in cooler, which they did not have before, um, just had refrigerators basically. Um, and then back into our cooking space. So be able to kind of increase the capacity of what they, they do. Um, there's our, our windows pick up uh, and order. And then a big open space that we're excited about just as a collector for community. It'll have an overhead door flows right out onto a little patio space there. And so this is the area where if you come through the entry, so that is where that new entry addition will come in at this lower level. Um, so you'll see stuff when you come in. You'll have this big gathering area um, off to the left, uh, another little um, accessible toilet uh, facility. Um, this is our paint break um, and paint office. Um, so that used to be over in building two. We moved it over here. It's connected to that paint canopy. Um, these are some support spaces. Um, so storage, uh, that'll be the IT, a lot of the IT equipment in the future. And then you see a little crawl space. Um, so the box office was an addition um, in the not too distant past. And so it's built at a slightly different level, um, you know, understanding when all these little infills and additions uh, were done, it's interesting, um, but that little crawl space gives us a little avenue to get some of our mechanical duct work from one area over to another. And now, so we came down the corridor that I said Megan and I are excited about, and we're in, this is going to be um, an actor's lounge. Uh, it's a little bit more of an enclosed space if they need to have a meeting or just kind of a quieter private area, have you know, some meeting tables, also just lounge furniture, um, nice view out onto the West Fountain. And then down below, um, given this little space exists, it had some stairs, we wanted to make sure we had an accessible lounge area. So this is sort of the lower lounge, uh, the open space for gathering, kind of that east end connecting that internal corridor. And then we transition over to, we've got a couple of, of restrooms with showers. So again, just giving people who are here long hours an opportunity to get inside, relax, cool off, get prepped from day to night. Um, this is our stage manager space. So this was historically upstairs. Um, so during a show, during rehearsals, they had a long route to run in case they needed to go grab something. Um, they're supporting the actors. They're making sure the shows are, are getting prepped. Um, so bringing that down in connection with our actor spaces and making it more accessible um, for those stage managers running back and forth. And then this space is going to be a rehearsal space. So that's another space that was upstairs. And you had to walk through it to get to the stage managers in the actor's lounge. So now, again, we've brought that down, put it on the path of the actors who are running back and forth between rehearsal spaces, making it easier to get back and forth. Um, so you saw we were adding a ramp and a new uh, accessible egress and then creating those accessible paths to get to the space. Um, we're going to do a K-13 spray acoustic insulation on the slab in that spot to help with any sound transmission. Um, you can see um, the aesthetic that we are moving towards is leaving more of the bones of this building um, exposed. Uh, so leaving that uh, concrete slab, concrete structure open, seeing the ductwork and the conduit, et cetera, it'll all be painted. 
but it'll be, it, it'll be part of the aesthetic that we see. So we are walking up um, the west stair in building one. And so this is the floor, if you remember from that diagram, we were able to just spread that orange, the administrative offices across this full floor. So this used to be the rehearsal space and stage manager, but now um, we've activated it, allowed the offices to expand. When I say that the Muni is great on squeezing every last inch, um, they just historically have just always kind of reworked, reworked to, as they've grown, they've grown a lot over the recent years in finding space to put those people, those uh, full year uh, administrative staff. So now we're able to do that, spread them out on this floor. This space is a, a kind of a, an anomaly. Um, this is the scenic seamstress. Um, historically, this uh, person was docked in with the costume shop, um, which she's dealing with big bolts of fabric. These are being put on the booms that are then painted. So she was in the costume shop, but she's as much related to the carpenters, um, kind of creating those booms and then getting them to the painters. So we created this spot here. It gave her a more direct connection to um, the materials that she's working. We added a new opening and a stair. Um, we didn't have an egress stair, so that helped in, in one light, but it also gave that connection to get materials to her um, and just have a dedicated space because she didn't really belong in the costume shop. Um, so even though this is on the administrative floor, it's kind of a unique little piece and connecting her more to the carpenter and build area. Amanda, before we yeah. continue on, I've got a great question from yeah. Kirk in the audience. He's asking, to what extent did the 2020 season COVID cancellation assist with design and construction logistics? It definitely helped a little bit. You know, um, the timing of the documents and when those came out, we weren't able to capitalize as much as maybe you would think or we would hope. Um, but it, it helped a little bit. Um, the Muni team did need to vacate a little bit quicker, but it allowed us to start just a little bit sooner than we would have if it had been a normal season. Um, so certainly every day that we can capitalize on, that has helped. Um, so yeah, good question. Thank you, great question. Yep, yep. Um, Thankfully we had all of our interviews done before that started. So yeah, uh, touring the Muni and talking to right. everybody happened right before that. So. It was nice that we had that part done. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so we are kind of in the middle section now of the administrative level. So this area, more of the offices we're able to work with as they are. Um, so kind of just cleaning up a lot of this. We did open up some spaces that weren't before, um, but you can see some of these walls um, were existing previously. Um, we needed to clean up maybe a little more than we had anticipated just as different things on the wall came off. The drywall wasn't necessarily in as great a condition as we had hoped. Um, but um, so, yeah, these are some of the spaces where it's critical that they can see out to the stage. Um, so the artistic director, our uh, associate, actors associate, I blink, I'm sorry, messing up the name there. Um, and then we're seeing out to the roof of the box office, which infilled from the front pergola over to building one. Um, so I think this is our education offices that we're in now. That's a space that has grown uh, on the Muni staff recently. So you can see this is a spot where we don't have concrete structure. Um, Megan and I still don't quite know when the uh, design loft, the third floor was put in. The original drawings didn't show it. This was originally the rehearsal room. So big, beautiful double height space. But we think shortly thereafter, or maybe even during the process, they filled in the floor so that it has two levels. So upstairs is the, the design loft where the designers are creating these shows. And Amanda, um, Tracy's been amazing. And she piped in here in the chat. She said, it's the producing associate. Thank and you. Company manager, company Thank manager you. that are on that floor looking onto the stage. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now we're in the East Stair. So this is the spot where the new entry will come in. So in the not too distant future, um, there's a lot of site prep work. They were supposed to start, so that was an area where we needed some ground improvements and we have to do helical piles and those are ready to go in, but there's snow on the ground and it's frozen. So um, that spot is uh, 
a little slower to get started, but we're excited about it. You can kind of see, there you go. Thanks, Michael. We've got a hole, it's ready. <laughs> so entry coming soon. And so now we're more into our East End. Uh, this is the marketing space. This was one of our offices where they've got a lot of people and they've grown and they were in it. Not a tiny space, but not enough space previously. So allowing that space to expand. Um, at the outset of this project, we weren't necessarily finishing out the full East Wing, um, but we have added that scope. Michael, don't go breathe asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the asbestos warning there. Um, so this has more recently been demoed. Uh, so this scope is now in incorporated. Um, this end of the wing is where we have a few more of our executive offices, the president's office, managing director, and the boardroom. Um, so we're kind of shifting that boardroom. It'll have a new life, we're working on a new table um, as part of that design. Um, so they just recently demoed this spot, working through the abatement. Um, we're finishing up the drawings uh, for this, this piece of the build out. And then the remainder of this east wing. So uh, reconfiguring uh, your break areas, work areas, um, putting those in you know, better spots on the path or finding those points we could bring people together a little bit more. Um, something I didn't point out, we are replacing, if there was a window that hadn't been replaced already, which a fair amount had, um, we did as part of this project, go ahead and replace the remainder of those um, windows. And Amanda, I just had a, a message from Sean. He said abatement oh. hasn't started yet. And so Michael is safe. <laughs> Thank you, Perfect. Sean. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. I was thinking they said they had started. Okay, well, um, we've really covered a lot of ground. Um, oh, forgot, we are going upstairs. So just a quick peek, we're not doing as much on this third level. It was another space that had been recently renovated. Um, but as part of the entry addition, we are adding on a little bit of space on this third floor, obviously to be able to connect that elevator into the third floor. But there was one piece of the design program, the video designers, that was previously disconnected from the designer's loft. So that little addition will allow us to get that video design space onto this third floor. So where that plywood is, that's where the addition will come in on this third floor. I think Michael. <laughs> so right now there's a lot of tie-in, roof work, rooftop units being placed. Um, the addition work will be happening soon. So now I think we've seen all the pieces. Um, so if we have any other questions, Missy, I'll kick it back to you to, yes. to, to respond to. Anyone else have any questions? There's one question that popped up. Uh, Lynn Jabrowski uh, was hoping that this video wasn't done today, which I assured her it was in February because there's no snow on the ground. Um, but she asked, what, what is the anticipated completion time or is it complete now? I know the Muni season starts up soon. Now, Megan, do you know what their timeline is? Um, I think for the majority of the buildings, um, they should be maybe end of May, but for everything, inc including the main entry, which is um, being more fully constructed right now, that is end of June. So okay. that's how they're tracking right now. It, it, yeah, not all of it will be done and timer for the first show, I think, but the administrative side is what will still be kind of in process. Um, all of the all the, the working areas are, are pretty much done now, I think, right? Yeah, they're starting punch lists and stuff, so. Yeah. Great, great, it looks great. Um, one, one thing I'm not sure many people caught on to was the question that was asked towards the beginning, um, and I'm surprised nobody asked the question, but there's a river underneath the Muni? Um, I, I know people that attended the North Central Region Conference in 2019 heard the Forest Park uh, presentation and, and heard them discussing the River De Pere, but uh, didn't know it went underneath the Muni. That's interesting. Yeah, George, do you, I don't, George is probably the, more of an expert than I am, but uh, it's, it's quite a, an engineering achievement, I think. It, it is. Um, 
the civil engineering uh, group, and I don't remember the letters that they use, uh, awarded it one of the most incredible projects in the last century in like the 1930s. But it's a double deck uh, rectangular section sewer that takes essentially uh, a river um, that uh, is uh, runoff for the city of St. Louis. So sometimes it's very full, mostly it's not. But this double deck uh, storm sewer uh, and sanitary sewer to begin with um, ran completely under Forest Park from the uh, about the midpoint of the north border and uh, ended up uh, uh, kind of in the south uh, east corner. And it ends up dumping into the Mississippi River right at the southern border of the city. All right, thanks, George. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, there are no other questions. Uh, this is your last chance, folks. If you have any questions, please type them in. Uh, any final words, Megan, Michael? Thanks for letting us uh, show it to everybody again. It's been fun. Yeah, it's fun to get to do it again. <laughs> well, thank you for doing it. And uh, hopefully we can get you guys to come back next uh, next year when we're in Denver and maybe do a, uh, do a presentation again, but this time on the finished product. Yeah, That'd we'd love to do a, do a lessons learned on it with everybody too. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good presentation. Thank you.